Hi guys, hope you're well. So look, pasta, one of the most beautiful things in the world. I love everything with pasta. So I'm gonna give you a handful of beautiful recipes that I think you're gonna love. Hey guys, we're gonna make the most beautiful spicy sausage pasta with gorgeous cherry tomatoes, loads of herbs, balsamic, linguine. It's a real summer classic. A beautiful meal for six people. So get yourself a nice casserole style pan, something that can go in the oven. Happy days. First up, sausages. You can use any one that you can get your hands on. That's cool, but they've got to be good. This is a merguez sausage. This is a Moroccan style sausage made of lamb or beef. Pinch it and squeeze it like that. Um, I just find that's a kind of cuter size um, for having around your pasta, okay? Cut these off. So some olive oil goes into the pan. Let's get our sausages nice and brown. That'll just take a couple of minutes. So I'll put that on a medium heat. You know, you could do this over a fire, a fire pit, on a barbecue. You know, the smells are incredible. As that colours up, those beautiful spices come out. And then we want to start layering up the flavours. Bay leaf, a little bit of oregano, a little bit of marjoram. It's going to give you so much flavour. Then just take one red onion, finely chop it. That's the beginning of the veggies. Woo! I'm going to go celery, finely chop it. That goes in. So good. OK, garlic. I'm just doing two, finely slice it. So I'm taking a chilli, take the stalk off, and then I want to get the seeds out. Just use a teaspoon. If you just scrape those seeds out, and the white kind of membrane, that is where most of the heat is. We don't want the chilli to blow your head off. That's a failure, okay? We want it just to be a nice, warm, juicy sort of hug of like heat that kind of just gets the vibes going. We like that. Put that straight in. We definitely want to soften the veggies but we don't want to burn anything, so just take care of everything, keep moving it around. Now look, that's one kilo of lovely tomatoes. Don't go buying the hard ones that don't taste, buy the overripe ones that really do taste. Look at the colours, guys. Outrageous. Also, what I'm going to do now is just a little swig of water. You don't need much, but can you hear it's frying? Okay, we want to kind of stop that. And we want to sort of now go into sort of simmering away, blipping away sort of mode. So you can see there's moisture coming out of the tomatoes now. It's getting saucy. Uh, I'm just going to season it with pepper, not salt. There's salt in the uh, sausages, so we don't want to over season it. Uh, and also balsamic vinegar. Really, really nice. It's going to be unbelievable. So about a tablespoon goes in. Toss this up. Wah! So, so good. One last thing I do, get some herbs, put a bit of oil on it, spray it across the top like that. But guys, how optimistic and wonderful and summery does that look? So, we're gonna go in the oven for about 25 minutes, not too hot, about 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's just gonna simmer and blip away. All the flavors are gonna mix up and be beautiful. And that's gonna be amazing. And when that's ready, I'm going to serve it with the pasta. Come and have a look at this. Oh! It's looking gorgeous and it's smelling pretty fantastic. We've got some cooked linguine here. You can do it with any pasta that you want. I love serving it on a big old platter. We go in with that beautiful sauce. Hot, steamy, sweet, sour, spicy. I love this. Now, cheese has a wonderful ability to join up all the flavours. So I've got three options. Fresh ricotta, parmesan. I think I'm going to go for the salted ricotta, but use any one of those. And guys, that is really one of my favourite pastas. Beautiful, spicy sausage pasta. Mix it up, serve it to your mates, tell them you love them. And I'll tell you what, they're going to tell you they love you too, because that is one of my very favourite dishes. A great summer pasta dish. The flavour from the sausage and the quality meat is coming through. We're getting spices. We're getting beautiful sweet cherry tomatoes. Me and Gennaro are going to give you a delicious dish. This is spaghetti 
with a vodka and lemon arabiata sauce. Oh, lemon and vodka arabiata. Lemon arabiata sauce. Amazing. Bless you, so uh, good. So you're going to love it, right? So arabiata, which means angry. Ah, uh, you know, ah. Chili, spice, uh, with spaghetti. It's simple, cheap, comfort food. So but good. With lemon and vodka, next level. Arabiata, angry. It means uh, quick, easy, and full of flavour. That's all. So in this pan, we've got about four or five tablespoons of olive oil, extra virgin, okay? Low heat. I'm gonna take four chilies that have been halved and de-seeded, and we're gonna put the chilies in here. Um, Gennaro's got four cloves of garlic, um, finely sliced. Yes, sir. And he's gonna put that in here too. And this is gonna be really, really lovely. I'm gonna use a lovely Sicilian lemon, or try and get an unwaxed lemon if you can, or wash uh, another lemon. And I'm just gonna put the zest in here and lemon, garlic, chilies, tomatoes. Beautiful. Smell that. Oh, it's going to smell like really home. Remind me home. Remind me of my home. Remind my hometown. Remind me of family, friend, everything. So very gentle frying. And now we're going to go in with the vodka. Wow, wow. About three shots. We're going to flame it. In it goes. So we're going to flame that and you, you don't have to flame it. Actually, it's lovely to have it a little is. bit of heat there. Um, you don't have to flame it, but you're going to get a more caramelised flavour. But when the flame's gone, nice plum tomatoes. Just a little bit of anchovy can go in. Four, you'll never taste them, but what they'll do is they'll beautifully season this sauce and just let it kind of simmer away. So we're going to put that on full whack now, turn the heat up. We'll boil that away. Um, at this stage, when it's getting more saucy, then I can start breaking down yes. the tomatoes. And look, this is lovely. This is how we cook. Here come my little... Come on, kids! I've just lightly broken up the tomatoes. And see, the, the chilies are still whole. You can keep the chilies in, you can chop them up, you can take them out. Any way you like. It's right. in your control. We have a little taste now. Good. We have a little season. Um, with salt. It's very delicious. And then we're going to toss it with loads of hot steaming um, spaghetti. Really good extra virgin olive oil at the end. Lovely parsley goes in. And then a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. Right, kids behave. I don't want to make it taste cheesy. I'm literally using the Parmesan as a seasoning, really. Look at that, guys. Such a wonderful. Oh my. Wonderful, simple, honest recipe. This is it, guys. Um, just finish it with a little olive oil. Um, maybe just a little brush of Parmesan. Yes. Vodka, lemon, uh, tomato arabiata sauce with spaghetti. Simple, cheap, delicious. Uh, you've cooked all the vodka away, so even that lot could have it. We already know there's chilli in it. Okay, smart. Okay. Anyway, this is just for me and Gennaro. Love kids, don't you? How many kids you got, Gennaro? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That you know of? Uh, lovely play, lovely arrabbiata. I've got, with a half I've got five. <laughs> Such a beautiful dish. So simple. Let's just, let's just, let's just tuck in. Do you mind if I tuck in, Gennaro? I love it. So good. So good. Mm. Do you want some mm. pepper? No. We're going to cook some freshly made linguine, but you could use dried, no problem. And I'm going to do some garlic, some chilli. We've got our langoustines here and our prawns, beautiful prawns. Are you ready? Off we go. Three minutes, that's what we're going to do. Wait, so wait, he's putting on. olive oil in there. Gennaro's got some dried chilli to get that lovely flavour going. And finally slice some garlic. We're going to use parsley and some basil. Absolutely delicious. A little shake of white wine, and we will be laughing. This is one of those lovely energetic yeah. pastas that you can do super, super quick. You've got the chilies, you've got the garlic, you've got the olive oil. Let, let I'm start roasting. Uh, if you come over here, these are langoustines, which are beautiful. Go straight through, and then straight through the half, like that. And then what you've got is the flavor in there. Now, once you get in there, we can take that little vein out, yes. and we can take this little sort of sack out here, uh, which bit. we can remove 
Everything else is completely edible. Just a little bit of my olive oil. Some prawns, and we are gonna get that back in the oven. So, that is the tomato, the base, right? We've got the traditional cherries here. So as this starts to fry up, we can, you know, just throw it around. This is half cooked now. And then we can go in with the tomatoes, just like that. So very fresh. The seafood will be perfectly cooked and the tomatoes will just be loosened up and softened. So back in the oven we go. Do you want me to slice up some parsley? I'll yes. finely slice the stalks and I'll roughly chop the leaves like that. The stalks, don't throw them away. They're really, really good. Just finely slice them. And then what we can do is add just a little bit of white wine, not much at all. Just a tiny little drizzle goes in just to loosen up the flavours, the oil, the juice coming out of the tomatoes. I'll put the stalks in as well. He's seasoning it by throwing it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yes. So we've got some boiling salt and water here. And of course, if you're using linguine from home, follow the packet instruction. So we'll yeah. just put a little lid on, get that boiling. It's only going to take one minute to cook. Look at that. This is a dream. This is a dream. It's ready. You're going to see him take the linguine and the water's going to drip into here. And at the same time, I'm going to add a little bit more extra virgin olive oil, cold pressed. And the oil and the hot water and the juices from the tomato and the langoustine and the prawns, it's all going to come together to make this silky, light, beautiful sauce. That's one. This is so good. Come on, you can do it. Yes, 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 yes. Just a little bit here, just a little bit. There you go. That's what we're talking about, a quick prawn linguine. Delicious. Very good. Delicious. Tonight. You get the sweetness from the tomatoes, but also you get the flavour really quickly from the shell of the langoustine. Mm. But you can pull out the meat. That's so sweet. Oh my god. Mm. Thank you for I making my dinner tonight. Prawn I and do. langoustine linguine with a little white wine, tomatoes, herbs, and a lot of love. Ciao. I'm gonna make one of the most loved pasta dish. Calcio e pepe. What is calcio? Calcio is cheese and eh? black pepper. And so, two ingredients. You look at home, which have them in the cupboard, you must have a little bit of parmesan cheese. Uh, the one I make is with a pecorino, because it's the originals, you know. And also, plus, you must have some peppers inside. This is in a very Roman dish, very, very old dish. So, the pasta is boiled, a little, and let me show you how simple it is to make it. So. You have to have a large bowl on a plate like this. Grate the cheese inside. You know, it can be done with a bit parmesan. Or pecorino is the one original recipe. You just grate it, grate it. Just enough for about a couple of people. It looks plenty, but hardly use anything. You can see, come on, uh, see, that, that is enough. Let's put this one here. It'll be over black paper in some abundant black paper because that is where it gives you the flavor. I love it. Mix a little bit. You can see, look at that. Two ingredients, maximum flavor. Then you have a look, the pasta. If it's ready. Oh yes, it is ready. Sorry, I have to taste it. Mmm. Mm. Mm. It's al dente. Perfect. So you pick it up. Easy. Extremely easy. Just put me inside. Come on. Look at that. The spaghetti, you can see. The people understand about pasta, they can see it's a proper al dente. It's not, you know, flat, which is soft. You just put everything inside. Oh, I love it! I just 
love it. Put them on top. And then you need your two fork to mix it. Oh yes. Now, this is where it comes the best. You turn around and then you use a little bit of a pasta water. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And then again, you mix it to get a creamy out. Mix it. Right, there it is. Look at that lovely cream inside. Look at that. Now this is what I'm looking. I'm looking for that lovely creamy. You know, catching all, all the cheese inside. Oh my goodness me. <sighs> yeah, it's done. So now, a little bit more of cheese on top. Oh yeah. Come on, abandoned cheese. I love it. I love it. Just like this. It's two ingredients, so you can afford it. A little bit of a black pepper, a little bit more. Grab a nice fork. And bon appetito. Oh yes, this is for me. Oh my goodness me, yeah. I wish I can taste it. You can taste it. Two ingredients, maximum flavor. Do it. Be adventurous. It's not, it's a simple. Arrivederci. Lovely people, we are going to make the most incredible mac and cheese. I've got a recipe for you that's going to blow your mind. You interested? Let's do this. First up, a nice big knob of butter into a pan. Finely slice three of these onions. As the butter comes up to the heat, 15 minutes to make these onions go sweet and gorgeous. Medium high heat, a stir every now and again, beautiful. So after 15 minutes, you can see the onions have shrunk back down. It's lightly golden. So I'll take three tablespoons of flour, and that's our thickening agent to turn our milk into a silky, gorgeous sauce. And that will immediately suck up all of the moisture from the onions. And then I've got a litre of milk. So slowly, slowly, we'll add that milk. As soon as it's absorbed, we'll add some more. So the rest of the milk goes in, and we're gonna let that simmer while we cook the pasta. So of course, we're using macaroni. I'm only gonna cook this for five minutes. I wanna half cook the pasta, and then let this simmer while we get onto the other flavorings of this sauce. So when it comes to choosing the cheese, you could do one, of course you could, but I wanna do it my style, right? I want that balance of flavor, depth of flavor, and stringiness, ooziness. 100 grams of cheddar. Now that's a good flavor and a good melter. Then we're gonna to go to a really stringy, gorgeous cheese. So this is a raclette, but you could absolutely use a lovely Gruyere. 100 grams goes in like that, and then, Parmesan. I'll do that on a finer side. And Parmesan just has that amazing ability to join up flavors, make it all make sense. Now let's just talk about nutrition. This is not a green dish, but it is one of the most beautiful things ever. But also, as indulgent as this is, it's a brilliant carrier of seasonal veggies. So lovely fresh or frozen peas, bang, amazing. Getting asparagus in there, fantastic. Handful of spinach. But today, we're keeping it really simple. And this pasta has had nearly five minutes. Get into this pasta water and steal some of this starchy water, and we might need that later. We've only half cooked the pasta, and there's good reason for that, because when it carries on its journey of cooking, it's sucking up that flavor, not water. So I'll get that in, and I'll save back just a little bit for on top later. A teaspoon of English mustard gives it an amazing color and gentle heat. A little hack of a friend of mine that they swore by. And I tried it, and I did it as a blind taste because I swore that it wouldn't work, and it did. Mango chutney, one teaspoon. Slightly strange, but go with it. We're gonna add a little bit of this starchy water to get ooziness and silkiness. So it's really important to do this off the heat. We don't wanna be boiling cheese. At this point in the story, we go in with our macaroni, give it a nice little toss up. Oh, I'm excited, and I forgot one seasoning. Of course, Worcestershire sauce. A good couple of little swigs in there, and we are good to go. We're gonna take this gorgeous, silky, pastery goodness. Look at that. So that goes in the oven 
for half an hour at 200 degrees Celsius, which is 400 Fahrenheit. Now, what I want to do to make it even better is contrast that creamy, cheesy gorgeousness. So we're going to make a pan grattata. Bacon, herb, garlic, what's not to love? As it starts to get lightly golden, that is your cue to put the breadcrumbs in. And these flavoured breadcrumbs are like a gift on a simple pasta dish, even lovely stews, amazing. These breadcrumbs have gone golden and crunchy. They smell amazing, come on, half an hour. Oh, look at that, come on. Mac and cheese, beautifulness, crack. <laughs> come on, you know it makes sense. A few beautiful salad leaves, the ultimate smoky bacon. Crispy bits. Enough talking, let's just eat it. That's what we want. Nice cheesy bits. Mmm. Like the depth of flavour is off the hook. One of the things I like to do, which is my own personal problem, is to take a vulnerable, empty gem lettuce leaf and then load it with mac and cheese. And I actually do this at home, and my kids are around the table, and they're just looking at me going, you are such an idiot, you are like... But then, when they try it, they realise that I'm a missionary, trying to make the world a better place through mac and cheese. Don't judge me. Okay, you lovely people, we are gonna make a beautiful pasta dish. We're gonna make veggie bolognese. This is from my new cookbook, uh, Superfood Family Classics. We've taken one of the most classic family recipes, spaghetti bolognese, and we've made it veggie. It's really nutritious, it's perfectly balanced. It's three of your five fruit and veg a day, which is fantastic, and it's big enough wonderful ways to get your protein without eating meat, which is always really handy in modern day life. So look, we got Two sticks of celery, two carrots, two onions, two cloves of garlic. I'm using 20 grams of dried porcini here. Uh, that's the only sort of ingredient that you've got to find, really, but they're in the supermarkets, and this gives you the body of flavour, right? It's a really humble, delicious meal. So, a couple of tablespoons olive oil into a pan. Put that on a medium heat. Celery, nice and fine. We're going to slice up some garlic here and two sprigs of rosemary. Finely chopped, two carrots, half centimetre dice. This is a rustic peasant dish and it's gonna make you really, really happy. I'm using red onions, you can use white if you want. Finely chop it. We've got that on a medium heat and I'm gonna put a lid on. I'll give that a little shake um, and just sort of slowly sweat that off without colour for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, before I kind of disappear, I'm just gonna cover the dry porcini. It's very savoury. It's got a real deep, incredible broth. So this has had about 20 minutes now. And it's just frying away nice and gently. I can just turn the gas up a little bit. 100 mils of Chianti goes in there. Let it cook away. So while that's frying away, add a couple of leaves of bay leaves. They can go in now. Let's just roughly chop these mushrooms. These have rehydrated now. It's only 20 grams, guys, but it's big flavour. We're going to go in with the broth now, guys. We're ending the frying process now. Often there's kind of little bits of grit. Discard that. We're going to go in with the tomatoes, loosely bash those up, and they'll fall apart as they cook. I'm just going to put a swig of boiling water in each tin. Just swill it around. So, tomatoes are in. Now lentils, they're brilliant, they absorb flavour, just like meat would. So we're just going to break up some of those tomatoes and we're going to turn the heat back down to sort of medium. And I'm going to let that just kind of simmer and blip away for about 30 minutes and then I'll show you what to do next. So let's have a little taste. This is your opportunity to have a little season. Um, and the heat's off now. Um, I can put a little parsley through um, this lovely ragu. You could use basil if you wanted to. You can mix it up or lovely marjoram or something like that. In the pan next to it, I have uh, some pasta. 80 grams per person. I've traded up from white pasta, spaghetti, to whole wheat pasta. Three times the amount of fibre in whole wheat products. More B vitamins. So really, really good. So what I'm going to do 
is steal a little bit of water. I'm just adjusting the texture and I want it to be nice and loose so it just catches the pasta in a beautiful way. That pasta has had its sort of eight minutes now. It's ready and raring to go. So drain your pasta and just keep a little bit of that cooking water, okay? And I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm just gonna do a couple of portions of this. Look at that. Let's mix it up. Parmesan, 15 grams or so. The seasoning of the Parmesan just brings the lovely flavors together. Now it's starting to get thick now, right? And a bit claggy, and that's not cool. So we're gonna add some of that cooking water, and that's gonna keep it nice and loose and gorgeous. So let's plate this up. And before all the veggies start telling me off, saying that Parmesan is not vegetarian, this is actually a cheese called Bella Lodi, which is using a vegetarian rennet, and it's very similar to Parmesan. So here we go. The lovely veggie bolognese. Get in there. Mm. Really good. Sort of slightly smoky from the rosemary and from the porcini. Sweet from the tomatoes, and you've got all the veg that's kind of just cooked into the lentils to be that kind of ragoey sort of texture that we love. But give it a go. Super healthy and super delicious. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Pasta is an ultimate comfort food, and I've given it the superfood treatment, teaming it up with a sauce celebrating silky aubergines, sweet and tangy tomato spiked with garlic, basil, and chili. It's a comfort food dish with no guilt at all. Really healthy, and it's all about loving these. So I'm just gonna take the end off the aubergine like that. Just get rid of that little stalk. I'm gonna zip the aubergines in half and crisscross the flesh here just to let the steam in. And about 20, 25 minutes of good steaming uh, is all we need to make these lovely aubergines incredibly creamy and silky and elegant and gorgeous. We're also gonna steam two chilies, but prick them first to stop them exploding. Next, lightly toast 40 grams of pine nuts. This is a vegetarian dish, but we still want to get that hit of protein, so we're getting it from the ricotta, the parmesan, and the pine nuts. Just kind of badly pound them up, so you get some chunks, you get some whole ones, but also you get some kind of mush as well. And it's like a little sprinkle at the end with a little parmesan, some basil leaves. It's gonna look and taste incredible. Finally slice two cloves of garlic and remove about 30 grams worth of basil leaves from the stalk. There is flavor and fiber. So this is gonna go into the base of my sauce. And there's a kind of sweetness in the stalks that you get that you don't get in the leaves. We're gonna put a tablespoon of oil in a pan. Let's put in our garlic and our basil stalks. Then I'm gonna go very quickly in with two tins of lovely tomatoes. Pour the tomatoes in, refill the tins with water and add to the pan. Lovely, so bring it to the boil, get the heat nice and high, and then break up those tomatoes with the spoon and then we'll turn it down to a little gentler, medium heat. Let that bubble away for 10 minutes. Time to cook your pasta, and I'm gonna use the water that's been steaming the aubergines. I'm using whole wheat to ramp up the fiber. Let's check our steamed veg. Look at that. You can kind of feel already that they're getting sort of absolutely silky smooth. Just pull the chilies out. They're gonna be nice and tender and sweet. Just take the end off. Use the tip of the knife and just run it down the length of the chili. You can see how tender it is. You can open it out like a book. You can see where the skin and the flesh just separate. And we can just use the tip of the knife to get rid of all the seeds. So that's the really hot part of the chili. What I do want is the fruit. So if you see how brilliantly this skin comes off when you steam it, absolutely beautiful. Next, finely slice the chili and add to the pan. Stir that beautiful chili in. And what you can do to speed up the texture, just use a potato masher to just squash the tomatoes like that. Now, let's have a little feel of the aubergine. You want it just to fall apart, so can you just tear it? Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Gorgeous. And all I'm gonna do now is simmer this, let it all cook into each other, almost casserole. And that is gonna be beautiful. Leave to reduce down for about seven to 10 minutes. So it's looking good. Let's drain the pasta. It's had its time. This is ricotta. 
It's a very, very light cheese. It's a wonderful carrier of flavors. You can see it's bright and delicate and gorgeous. We'll go in with the pasta, in with the basil. I love the way the ricotta just kind of curds and breaks up. So gently does it. This is for four people, so it's generous. So look, if you're happy to give it a toss, that's even better, although you do sort of cover yourself with it, but that's all right. Um, just go over to a nice big platter. Pour that lovely sauce over it. It's so generous, so sweet. It's so beautiful. Scatter with more bright, punchy basil, then the toasted pine nut crumbs, and then a light brush of Parmesan from a height all over the place. And that, my friends, is one of my favorite pastas. It's really, really good. So that really is a superfood classic pasta dish. Gorgeous. It's got all of the food groups, dairy, protein, carbohydrates, and your veg. And look at it. Right, let's get in there. Let's have a go. Mmm. The aubergine is silky smooth. Sweet tomato sauce. And that hit of chili is really, really good. Mmm. You know what? It's 470 calories. It's really, really good. Little side salad, and you are laughing.